here at Ava Gallery in Lebanon, New Hampshire. My name is Charlotte Davenport. This is Jenny Lee Brewster. She's part of a wonderful show that's been on for the last month here in Ava with her friend Danielle Janadri. And um, they each had a separate wall of work and a, a combined piece. And we're going to have an opportunity to talk to Jenny Lee about her work and about the combined work on the wall. Uh, her friend is back in London, but those of you who saw the show, I'm sure enjoyed having her here too. Um, so, Jenny Lee, do you want to start talking about this wall of sure. paintings? So these paintings here are um, they're from a series of paintings I've been working on for the past year. There's about, I've done about, gosh, uh, probably 70 of them now, and the rest are installed in my studio in Brooklyn. And each painting sort of begins with a, a newspaper image. Um, pretty much 95% of them are from news images from the New York Times, just because that's you know the, the daily paper I read. And actually, on this one, you can even see the the head, you know, the, the Times. So these name. are collage. They're not copied. They're collage. They're collage. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're all, they're all directly from the paper. Um, and often, you know, in some of them, the image is pretty clear. Like here, you can see the outline of this landscape. And I've sort of actually, there's multiple landscapes here so it might be like a coast you know a seaside town and sort of more of a mountain valley and then I've extended kind of what's already there with paint and in this case not that you know not that much was added to sort of give the impression of this larger landscape and I've been sort of interested in how um, yeah how the mind sort of you know fills in information so just how these you know br simple brush strokes you know look like more sort of wooded hills and here you have this the image source was uh, wind turbines and actually what's been really interesting about this project is just seeing how different images are you know repeated over and over again in the paper and um, you know there's been a lot of photos of wind turbines so they actually appear in, in several different paintings of mine and I don't know even sort of what the sort I mean, the central image here of these people and this sort of cross um, is how that painting started, but I'm not sure where that's even set. You know, I often don't even read the article. I don't want to have the, the event or the location determine too much, um, you know, what the painting ends up becoming. I'm really sort of interested in, you know, creating, a, a, I guess, a new, a new narrative. And I can tell you, though, this one was, this is sort of an appropriation of an appropriation. Um, the source image is a, a Richard Prince. Uh, it's a newspaper f photo of a photograph by Richard Prince, which is of the Marlboro Man ad. So you can see the, um, the, you know, the, the cowboy in there. And then I've just gone and extended it here. And on this last one, I think that I've just painted over it so much that whatever photo was originally there has now been totally kind of obliterated and sort of really built up the surface with different materials. And I'm not even sure what this gunk is, maybe modeling paste. And there's pencil and pen drawn on it. And sort of like a little ship sort of sketched in, in the, um, on this horizon line here that's then reflected in this sort of like icy you know, see below. So that's pretty much it. What was your um, original impetus to start creating from newspaper and? Well, I've done a lot of, um, you know, I hadn't worked on canvas probably since I was an undergraduate um, mm -hmm. six or seven years ago. I've been doing, I'd started working on, on brown bags, on folding brown paper bags and sort of gluing them together to create these really long surfaces and then I could make, you know, paintings that were 20 feet long and then be able to roll them up so, you know, storage wasn't an issue and kept costs down so it wasn't paying for, you uh -huh. know, big canvases. So it was sort of a great way to work as a, you know, young artist who doesn't have a lot of resources. And then I moved from there into doing site-specific installations where I was, you know, working directly on the wall, like mm -hmm. with this piece here with Danielle. And, um, I'd just gotten back, when I started these paintings was about this time last year, and I'd just gotten back from doing a, a big installation in Reno, Nevada, which was a 50-foot wall piece. 
And I think I just wanted to start, you know, thinking small again. Now, was that the piece perhaps I saw online that people could go online and look at? There was a piece with uh, there's a couple three different, dimensional. Really. There's a couple. I did another. I've done a few wall installations. Mm -hmm. That one particularly was sort of like a, a desert scape, and there was and there was a lot of newspaper involved and stuff mm -hmm. sort of coming off the wall. Um, I did a similar piece to that in upstate New York, but that was much that. Mm, that one looked more sort of uh, romantic, and there was like a lot more junk involved in that one. It was more more sculptural. Now, on these larger pieces, is it a kind of combination as these are of landscape and then maybe uh, media? And uh, it's hard to tell. Yes, I mean, yeah, they all pretty much. I mean, I've been working sort of under the umbrella of you know landscape for uh, several years now, mm -hmm. and. Um, they're usually, like this one, well, I'll wait till we get to this piece to talk about it, but they're usually, you know, inspired by the, the site where I'm, I'm working, the actual mm -hmm. geographical setting, maybe the history of that place. Um, and also this one, you know, very much is, you know, is a media escape. I mean, it's about, um, well, it's, it's, you know, dealing with, you know, the images that are sort of like, you know, shaping our lives and certainly my mm -hmm. lives and my life in New York and, um, and a picture of like the world and like the world as, a world that's increasingly, you know, getting flatter, or that, you know, we're all sort of looking at the same, same pictures. Well, in some of these, I have to be frank, feel very sad to me. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I'm not pushing well, you toward a political statement, but um, I don't know why. It just feels that uh, maybe this is encroaching upon the mountains or, um, you know, this is very isolated um, in the plains or, you mm -hmm. know, people used to go out into the plains to make civilizations, and now maybe there's a different sense about what's going on. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I mean, as like as a, a, a refuge or an doing. escape as opposed to like, uh, well, it's a place of, that they're that going there to like, you know, construct something. Mm -hmm. um, well, well it that's, could be either or. Well, I think, you know, often you think, so. you know, I'm, I'm interested in sort of the history of, of landscape painting and American landscape painting, and often sort of, you know, in, when Thomas Cole and uh, Frederick Church and the rest of the American sublime painters were, you know, showing paintings that sort of showed America's sort of, you know, expanse, you know, that, that openness was kind and of... the places they could not get to, the yeah. people who viewed these. And it was often, though, you know, a signal, too, of, like, of this is what's, you know, sort of abund ab abundant land available to sort of actually, to go and develop, you know, mm -hmm. sort of a call toward, um, you know, expansionism. And... Um, so here it's sort of like, you know, okay, so now dealing with that same kind of material, like America, you know, just sort of open space, um, you know, 150 years later, it is, it's like the idea that it's shrinking. You know, we're very much aware of the fact that, you know, it's, it's not endless anymore, you know, that we are running out of, you know, land and resources. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely, you know, issues around land use are very much, you know, present in my work. And I think that has to do I don't see how you can really be, you know, dealing with landscape today and have that not be part of the content because it's just, it, it is what it is, yeah. Yes, it is. Well, shall we go on to this collaboration? Sure. So this piece um, I did with Danielle Genadry and we did it specifically, you know, for this space. Um, we knew we, that we wanted to use this opportunity, um, the show together, to actually, you know, totally conceive a, a piece from start to finish, you know, jointly. And then y'all set it up with the school, with Dartmouth, that we were able to stay in their artist in residence house for two weeks prior to the opening of the show. And you know, Ava had the space available for us to come and you know work um, every day. And we had been sort of just emailing back and forth for I don't know six you know, casually for six months leading up to the show. So you were in Brooklyn and she was I was at in this Brooklyn. In she was at London finishing up her degree at the Slade. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just throwing back different ideas about, okay, where, what do we want to use as a starting point? What are some possible themes? What do we see um, as, you know, connected interests in our work? And we started thinking about, and then just the idea of like, okay, what is a collaboration? And um, 
we sort of came up with this idea of mirage as a, as a meeting point, and we started thinking about um, different kinds of mirages, and uh, came up, or at the time I was reading this book uh, actually by Bill Fox, who's seated over there by the window, um, about Antarctica, and particularly the pa a passage that stuck out to me was this idea of uh, Fata Morgana, which is a, a polar or a kind of mirage that uh, appears most often in polar regions. And it's like, a, it's an inversion, I guess, of what I'm looking to Bill to know if I'm giving you the right information. But it's where I think the air above the ground is, is slightly, the, slightly warmer than the actual ground. And what happens is, as opposed to like a desert mirage where we're used to where the ground is actually hotter and then you get that sort of reflection of the sky on the pavement. Um, in this situation, you get like a, like a funkier mirage. It's often distorted or stretched, or they might vibrate. Or cliffs or icebergs that are off in the distance will appear to like hover much closer. Um, anyway, so we sort of did some research on Fata Morgana and thought that we would basically just have that be you know a theme and see where we could you know go from there. And we. Danielle came to New York before we got up here, and we worked together in my studio. And um, you know, she'd go in one day, and then I'd come in and see what she'd done and move things around. And we just sort of did this back and forth, getting used to each other's, um, you know, body languages, gestures. Um, and then at the end of, you know, that sort of two weeks, you know, we took everything down, and we're like okay, let's go to New Hampshire and let's just start fresh. I mean, now we kind of feel like we're familiar with each other and how we move in the studio. So we got here and um, this material, this sort of translucent plastic, um, is actually folders from Staples and like just, you know, school folders. So we decided that we would just re really sort of reduce our materials to this one, this one element, which had a lot of the qualities that we were interested in. You know, it was reflective, it was translucent, uh, the colors related to landscape and, you know, sky, and we could layer it. There was just, it seemed like there was a lot of possibility um, already in the material. And so that was like step A, and step B was we, choose, we chose an image to sort of start from as our template, and we just looked through a, a magazine I had of different um, you know, landscapes from around the world. We chose this picture, this sort of just totally, you know, banal picture of like mountains and a lake and, you know, a sky and trees. And we sort of, we Xerox that, we then Xerox that image and then traced each of those four parts that I just named. So we had like four, four shapes. And we basically, so we had our material, the folders, and then we had our shapes and we just traced I don't know, uh, you know, a hundred folders and cut them out into these, you know, s these shapes. And we had <laughs> friends help us and we had parties where we were just, you know, everybody was tracing and cutting. And then when we got all of our piles together, we started, you know, just sort of pinning them to the wall and watching what happened and sort of letting the material do its thing. And, you know, again, still sort of keeping in mind this, um, this interest in Fata Morgana and thinking about, um, opticality and illusion and distortion and mirroring and all the, you know, all this sort of, and thinking about where we were actually and thinking about, you know, this, 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 setting, region. this mountain, yeah. the white mountains. Anyway, so we, like I said, initially we sort of uh, pinned the, this material to the wall in kind of a rigid fashion, sort of following a series, like a mathematical proof where we you know, put up all small pink ones and then all small blue ones and then maybe alternate and just, just watching. And that's So the we, process became almost like painting together. I mean, it, it was. I mean, at first it was really, I mean, I felt like at first it was like more, it was like scientific. It was much more, mm -hmm. um, it was just much more methodical than I, than I was used to. And I was, I'm much more used to like sort of improvisational approach. Um, being like freer, following impulse, sort of making aesthetic judgments as I move along. And we were really trying not to do that. We were trying to sort of remove ourselves from the process initially and just, and just watch. And we did that for about a week. And then we like, you know, took everything down. And I actually went and climbed a mountain, Mount Monadnock or Mount, 
what's it called? You know, there's like a. Where was it? It's right Manadnock by here in, near King College. Anyway, well, I that went, would have been Manadnock then. Manadnock. Yeah. So I went and climbed this mountain with my friend, and um, you know, got to the top of the mountain and was able to see this, you know, great 360 view of like, you know, the whole region and just mm -hmm. sort of, you know, clouds and lakes and trees and valleys and all of that. And then we came back here and um, we took everything off we've been working on, and we're like, okay. We've gathered all this information. Now, basically, let's just paint. And then we both sort of started just, just working and moving and kind of, I think she was down there, and I'd be down there, and we'd be moving back and forth, and just um, really treating the material you know, like it was you know, paint, and that each you know, the shapes were our you know, painterly gestures, and you know, allowing imagery to come out. And I know for me, I remember particularly working on this area, and I felt like you know, that memory of climbing that mountain and that view was still really fresh in my head. And I think that that started to really come through here, this sort of just, you know, green slope and, and you know, clouds and land and that kind of coming together. And what you can't see it at really at this time of day, but it was really strong at the opening. And with light on it later on. Late, uh, with light on it late at night, so when you don't have all this light peering in through the, the oh, windows, yeah. is you get this, um, you know, shadow underneath that basically is like a, you know, a ridge line, oh, a mountain line. Interesting. So, and that was really cool about this. We wanted a piece too that would really, that would change because we're, you know, again, interested in this idea of, mm -hmm. um, you know, mirage that would change throughout the day that would respond to, you know, the, the natural, the natural and the artificial Well, it does light. that even as you move your, your own body mm -hmm. across it because our shadow comes on it too. Yeah. So it's a very interesting piece. And then this wall is actually, like, it's not... Like, I painted this wall really softly, like a light, light blue. So if you get close, you can kind of see it, that it's not just white. It's, do you see what I'm saying? Tinted a bit. It's tinted a bit. And I kind of was interested in just sort of pushing that a slight vibration. So it would mm -hmm. even just push that, you know, the, the vibration of the piece a little, a little further. And again, just sort of playing with this idea of, um, you know, just playing, you know, playing tricks on the eye, I guess. Now, it's interesting to watch how it goes around the corner, but on the other hand, it's very hard to maybe perhaps uh, get this on camera so we could at least describe what happened over here. Sure. Um, so over here, basically, we're still working with this material, this plastic folder, but we've painted, um, we've painted it like a dark purple, purpley blue, so it's sort of you know, shifts to this nighttime sky and it becomes, whereas this one I think is more um, sort of mountain and trees in its palette, although there's definitely a sense of, you know, sky as well. Um, this really becomes, you know, all night and it's almost like this like stormy Turner-esque sky. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a great Turner show up at the Met in New York. Actually, I think it just came down, but something I saw a couple of times this summer was that, that show and I think those those turners maybe influence some of the choices we made over here. And what I like about also this side of the wall is that the, you know, the, it's all fastened with these little, you know, tiny nails. And I feel like the nail heads kind of operate like, <clears throat> like stars, like constellations yeah. over here. Mm -hmm. They do. They're sort of vibrating yeah. and sparkling. And then this sort of also, again, plays with this idea of um, just, you know, date. Bringing in the outside world, the inside, the day, the day and night situation. Mm -hmm. Well, it becomes a real experience walking along this, and having you talk about it has made it even more fun to go back and investigate. Great. And I do see a relationship to your work um, and what you're doing. I look forward to seeing more of your work. Is this going to impact what you're up to now? Do you think? Oh, I'm way? sure it will. Definitely. Um, Not clear yet, because you haven't gotten quite back. Yeah, it'll, and, I, and it'll, yeah, I'm sure it'll it'll unfold over time. But it was it was great. I mean, one of the not hmm. so not only did like sort of being here, you know, in the setting sort of influence this piece. I mean, making this piece kind of influenced how I was beginning to see the world I was in. So while I was up here, you know, for those two weeks, it's like I'd be driving around and I start to like really notice you know, just the different gradations and the, the color of the sky, at, you know, at sunset in a way that I hadn't necessarily before because working with this, you know, the, these pinks and blues and yellows mm -hmm. really got me just um, in tune, tune to how light, you know, comes through color. And I think this will definitely, and working, when you're working with something, you know, I do some, 
installations that are kind of spectacular and involve a lot of stuff and are just really saturated. And it's, I like the opportunity, you know, to really reduce, you know, what I'm working with because I think it does, it really sharpens, you know, my, my, my vision in a way. Mm -hmm. and, and that sort of, that sharpness that I have to bring to this, this installation, you know, I, I then take out of the world with me. So I think that it'll okay. be interesting, yeah, to see how it continues to unfold. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you. I'm glad you were here.